R28. This old-time radio program was originally aired live, long before the advent of high fidelity. We hope, however, that any variance in audio quality will not take away from your pleasure in listening to this, one of the all-time favorite shows. Oh, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of Amos and Andy. Well, the king all winter, and she feels that she's in desperate need of a vacation. At the moment, she's telling her husband, the kingfish, in no uncertain terms. I want to go away on a vacation like other people do. Yeah, well, why is he yelling about a vacation all of a sudden, honey? Because I'm tired. I want to get away. I'd like to take a boat where I won't have nothing to do. Okay, sweetheart, if that's what you want. You mean it, Joe? Yeah, I'll meet you in Central Park at 4 o'clock, and I'll even do the ruins. <laughs> Two years and only one time did you come to me and suggest that we go on a little trip. Yeah, that was a nice trip, too. Yeah, but everybody goes on a honeymoon. <laughs> I never will forget that trip. That was the hardest trip we ever made. Now, what you talking about? You was at the finest hotel at Niagara Falls for a whole month. Yes, and I was the only bride there working as a chambermaid. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I can't afford to take you on another vacation. Well, what I want to know is what's happened to that money that I put in the sugar bowl every week so we could get out of town this summer? Well, I had to dip in it so we could stay in town this winter, that's all. <laughs> George, I'm telling you that I insist on getting a vacation and you better do something about it. Well, all right, honey. If that's the way you feel, I'll do my part. Well, that's more like it. I'll write to the hotel in Niagara Falls and see if they can use you again this year. <laughs> Tell you, Henry, my wife really hopping on me about going away on a vacation. Yes, vacation talk is up in the air right now, and unfortunately, the vacation prices is in the same place. Yeah, I don't know what to do about it. Well, we ain't decided, but I know last year I couldn't get away, but Mrs. Van Porter went to Saratoga Springs to take the bath. Hmm, the bath, huh? What's mm -hmm. the matter? Was your plumbing out of order? <laughs> No, oh, no, Kingfish. These is mineral baths. Oh, mineral. Yes, you know, doctors recommend that your minerals need bathing every often or so on. Well, uh, I don't know where Sapphire wants to go, but she's been nagging my head off. Tell me this, and uh, what do other people in the society crowd do about vacation? Well, the Worthington Peabody's will go away this summer because their winter motoring trip to Florida didn't work out too good. Oh, it didn't, huh? No, they couldn't agree on a car. She's very social, you know, and wanted a Cadillac. But he insisted on a Lincoln. Well, what happened? They stood on the highway for five hours and nothing went by but Fords and Chevrolet. Uh, they were going to hitchhike, huh? Yes, but after their experience in getting to Florida, Mr. and Mrs. Peabody say that they'll never do it again. Well, uh, why not? They claim a very low class of people is driving automobiles. <laughs> Yeah, the automobile club ought to do something about it or it's going to kill hitchhiking, all right. Uh, I wish I knew it some way of raising some money to take my wife Sapphire on a vacation. Well, Kingfish, why couldn't you raise the money by selling that automobile of yours? Well, that car of mine's a pretty bad wreck right now. Yes, but you know Andy has got a new girl. He ought to be a pretty good prospect for your car, Kingfish. Yeah, that ain't a bad idea. Andy is a good prospect. Yeah, I could sell him this car and that'd give me enough money to go away on a vacation. See you later, Henry. I'm going prospecting. Well, congratulations, Andy. I hear you got a new girl. Yeah, and I'm crazy about it, too, Kingfish. I even like a mama. Mm -hmm. Oh, this gal is really sweet. Yeah, what kind of a car do you take out riding in, Andy? I ain't got a car, Kingfish. No car? No. You mean that this is a pedestrian courtship? <laughs> And everybody that's courting a gal needs an automobile. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think I'll go out and look for an automobile. Well, all you got to do is look straight ahead right out there at the curb. As you sit, I'm going to sell my car. Well, I wouldn't want to buy a car like yours, though, Kingfish. Yeah, well, what's wrong with it? Come on, step outside and look the thing over. All right. I just had it fixed up. You did? Oh, yeah, the door on the driver's side now has got a handle on it. <laughs> and uh, the two front fenders are tied on with solid copper wire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Dad, look over there. 
What make car is that? Well, it's got Chevrolet wheels, Pontiac radiator, got Oldsmobile fenders, Buick springs, and a Cadillac hubcap. <laughs> Uh, you was here at General Motors, ain't you? Yeah. Well, this takes in the whole corporation. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, let me open the door here and look inside. Yeah, go ahead, open the door. <laughs> nice tune, is it? <laughs> the thing I want to hear is the motor. Start it up one. Uh, you want to hear the motor, huh? Uh, you sure of that, huh? Yeah, that's the main thing. Go ahead, start it up. Okay, let me get down here, sit down here in this thing. Here we go. <laughs> Cheap gas. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, that motor sounds bad, you know it? Well, I think a speck of carbon got in the cylinder head somewhere there. Maybe a fly brought it in, you know, to fly around there. Listen, start that thing up again. I want to hear that again. Hear it again. <laughs> All right, I'll start it. Here we go. <laughs> Automatic cutoff. Get on back in the office and cut the thing in. Yeah, okay. What you want for it? Well, I tell you what, I'm going to give him a rock bottom price here right off the bat. Now, uh, $75, and that's a steal. Now, be great for you and your gal. Now, here's the bill of sale and also a guarantee with my signature on it. And when my signature's on anything, it is good as gold. Yeah. Now, here, I'll sign the thing right here now. Yeah. Now, here's all the papers. Here's the keys to the car. Now, give me the money. All right. Sold. Here you is, King. Oh, thank you. Hey, wait a minute. This ain't money. No, but like you say, it's good as gold. <laughs> it's that I owe you for $75 with your signatures you gave me three years ago. So long, Kingfish. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Paying me with one of my no good IOUs. That's dishonest. <laughs> George Kingfish Stevens speaking. George, this is Sapphire. Some good news. Oh, what's that, honey? A friend of mine that belongs to my club just called me up and told me she had a cottage up in Canada and she ain't gonna use it this summer and we can have it all to ourselves. Oh, that's wonderful. So we ain't gotta worry about our vacation no more, honey. In fact, we can leave right away. You see, we can drive up in the automobile. The automobile, oh yeah, yeah, the automobile, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll tell you, honey, I'll speak to you later about the automobile. I'll build it right now, honey, goodbye. <laughs> oh, me, oh. Well, it ain't no use letting a lot of tears start running down my cheeks here. I got to look on the bright side of this. And there's one thing certain. You can't see the sun when you cry. Oh, a tear can hide the brightest sky of blue. You can't hear a song when you sigh. I'm sure you'd clean them up to look for rainbows when it rains. You can't see the sun when you're crying. So smile and let the sun shine through. You can't see the sun if you're gonna cry, so dry your eyes. You can hide the brightest sky of blue. Can hear a song when you're sighing. No matter how the birdies sing for you. Suppose your eyes were cloudy when the pain grew. You know you'd clean them up to look for the rainbow when it rains. You can't see the sun when you're Well, hello there, 
Shorty, how is you? Well, I've been doggone for that. I'm surprised. I didn't expect it. But what's I would get. Hi, Kingfish. <laughs> I believe I'll sit down in your barber chair here and have a shave and a haircut. I, I refuse to give a haircut today, Kingfish, but I'll, I'll give you a shave. Yeah, well, why will you shave me and not give me a haircut? I'm too nervous to hold a pair of scissors. Uh, Shorty, I come here to tell you that me and my wife has been invited by a friend of hers to take a cottage uh, uh, up in Canada for a vacation. Canada? I, I went down to the depot last summer to, to, to buy a ticket for Canada. Yeah, well, uh, where was you going? I, I, I was going to Saskatchewan. That's why I didn't go. Yeah. Shorty, you ain't never been to Canada, huh? Oh, yeah, years ago, I used to make my living up there trapping. Was you a good trapper? Oh, I, I, I was the fastest trapper in Canada, the very fastest. Shona? Oh, yeah. When, when, one day I went out into the woods, I set the trap. I covered it up very careful. I stayed real quiet, and in five seconds, the trap snapped. Yeah, what'd you catch? My foot. Listen, Shorty, uh, me and my wife is invited up to Canada, but I done sold my car to Andy, and I, oh, I know you bought a new car this year. I'll give you $10, no questions asked, if you will give up your car for two weeks. You, you give me, you, uh, give, give me the car. Uh, there you is. Where is it? At, at the auto loan company. That's yeah. what that was due on it. Uh. <laughs> I hear you bought the Kingfish's automobile. You must be in pretty good financial standing. Well, since I got that car, I've certainly been on my feet. Uh, you mean, uh... <laughs> uh you, you mean the, 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 uh, the car don't run good? The Kingfish told me it had puncture-proof tires. Well, I say they're puncture-proof. It had sand in them. <laughs> I can tell time by the right front tire. Uh, how you do that, son? It's got a hole in it, and it works like a hourglass. Takes two hours and 20 minutes to run out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess uh, you take your new gal out riding a lot, won't you? Oh, yeah. As soon as I got the car this morning, I took her out in the country. We parked, and then when I wanted to start the car, there I was, stuck. Oh, did you run out of gas? No, I run out of sand. Please turn the cassette over at this point to begin side two. To you. Yeah. Well, there goes the big deal. I'll see y'all later. So long. Hey, wait a minute, Amos. Wait a minute. Do me a favor, will you? Uh, what's that, Andy? I got to pump up the spare tire. Stop by the building supply company and get me a bucket of sand, will you? Okay. <laughs> Say, Kingfish, what you out chiseling now? Uh, brother Andy, when something nice happens to me and my wife, I want to share it. Yeah. And you was the first one to think of. Me and my wife has been invited up to Canada by one of her friends. Uh, she's going to turn her cottage over to us. Well, why did you think of me? Well, I thought you might uh, drive me and my wife up there. We'll make room for you in your car, and then you can tour around Canada. <laughs> and while we are there, you tour all over to Canada and pick us up on the way back. Yeah, but uh, what'll I do in Canada? What will you do in Canada? Yeah. One of the greatest hunting places in the United States is up in Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, I ain't even got no gun. Well, I'll lend you my bow and arrow. That's much safer. It is? Hey, you ain't never heard nobody getting killed with unloaded bow and arrow, is you? No, well, uh, I'd like to go up there and shoot myself a covey of mooses. <laughs> Right time, all right. The moose season just opened up last week. Yeah, maybe I could get some antlers. Yeah, you're in luck again. The antler season opens up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me this, Kingfish. Uh, what kind of equipment do uh, I need to hunt moose? Well, you ain't got to have no trouble there, Andy. You just take a moose horn along with you. Okay, I'll take it. But will the moose know how to blow it? Oh, sure he will. Yeah. Is it any duck hunting up there? Oh, plenty of duck hunting. The country is loaded with duck blinds. What's them? Well, that's where you hide from the ducks. Well, what you want to hide from them? You got a gun and they ain't. <laughs> How about fishing? Oh, the fish streams up there is really loaded. In fact, a friend of mine was standing on the bank 
putting a salmon egg on the hook. A trout jumped up to the water and bit him on the hand. He got a big scar on his hand where the trout bit it. No, oh, oh, yeah. You know, I'd like to catch one of them big stuffed fish on a board so I could hang it right on my wall. <laughs> Well, I tell you, uh, you spear them, you see. The nice part of it is if you miss the fish, you hit the board. You see that? Or you're bound to bring something back every time. No, Kingfish, I was just thinking it ain't going to work. I would be willing to drive you up there, but I know my gal don't want to leave town, and I ain't going without her. We done made agreement. We're going to stick together. Oh, now, listen, Andy, you owe it to me and my wife to take us up there as long as you've got my automobile. Nothing doing. Well, now, wait a minute. You got it with my no good IOU, and I'm going to call up and make an appointment with my lawyer and see what I can do. Go ahead. I'm leaving. That big bum talking to me. Well, hello there, brother Andy. How is you? Well, Fred Wendell, what you doing in this neighborhood? Well, just been across the street getting a haircut, getting a haircut. Andy got the hair right here in my pocket. Got it right here in my pocket. <laughs> Got your hair in your pocket? Yes, and I'm a newspaper man. Always saves my clipping. Ha <laughs> ha, ain't I, so? Uh, uh, congratulate me, Gwendell. I just bought an automobile. Automobile is a dangerous thing, and a dangerous thing. A few years ago, I was hit by an automobile. Broke both my legs, both my legs, two legs broken. What'd you do? Well, I took the owner of the automobile in the court, and I threw him up one side and down the other. He testified, and then they called on me, but I lost the kid. How come you lost it? Didn't have a leg to stand on, ain't I, killer? Well, the kingfish wants me to drive him up to Canada. Oh, Canada's a beautiful place up there. You will love that country, Andy. Oh, that fur trapping up there is really something. Boy, that fur country up there is loaded with expensive fur. Loaded, huh? Oh, expensive fur is so plentiful up there, Andy, that even the silver foxes wear mink. Shut your mouth, Wendell, and get out of here. So long, Andy. Rinse so wide and rinse so wide. Well, hello there, LaGuardia. How's my lawyer? Oh, come, come in, Kingfish. I just got back a minute ago. Yeah. Oh, where was you? I was down at the Columbia University. They had a reunion today at the Columbia Law School, class of 28. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, wonderful lunch in the bar, am I suppose. Mm. <laughs> then after lunch, they were going to have a lot of speeches about the old alma mater, see, but I left. Oh, uh, why? Yeah, I didn't go to Columbia. <laughs> Well, you know, I know a lawyer in this town that went to a certain university, and now he's just bored. They won't let him go into court. Well, I'm glad they waited in law from a correspondence school. They won't even let me go into post office. <laughs> well, tell me this, uh, LaGuardia, has you been busy today? I was in court all morning defending my client. Yeah, what was the charge against him? He was arrested for playing drop the handkerchief. <laughs> Dropped the handkerchief? That handkerchief dropped off his face and the cop recognized him. <laughs> well, I bet there's a lot of crime going on at that. Is the electric chair at Sing Sing busy? Busy? Oh, man, they had to put in an electric dabbing pole. <laughs> Uh, let's get out of business here. Now, look here. I sold Andy my automobile, and he paid me with one of my old IOUs that was three years old. Three years old. Yeah. Now, uh, that's just the question. Is the IOU good that long? You know anything about the statute of limitations? The statute of limitations. Is that the one with the fella on the horse? <laughs> talking about an IOU. Ain't they paid for that statue yet? No, no, now listen, this morning my wife phoned me that a friend of hers invited us up to Canada to take their cottage. Now Andy won't drive up there because he's in love with a gal and he won't leave unless she goes with him and she don't want to leave New York. Oh, well, play on her feelings, bud. Tell her that Andy's a sick man. He ain't got but a short time to live. See that? He, he ought to go away for his health and then if she loves him, she'll go away with him. Yeah, you got an idea there. I'll make believe Andy has only got three months to live. I'll go in the gal's house first as Andy's doctor and then have Andy come in a little later. So long, LaGuardia. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Now, I'll walk out with you. See, I got to go home and put on my tux later. I'm going out tonight. Well, where are you going? Uh, they've had my buffet supper tonight at Columbia after the speeches is over. Oh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> Well, I hope 
just worked on. Oh, how did you do? Uh, good afternoon. I'm Dr. John Smith, Ph.D., D.D.T., and all them things. Uh, uh, Dr. Smith, what can I do for you? Well, I happen to be the personal physician uh, for Andrew Brown. And knowing that uh, you have been associated with him in a romance way, I wanted you to be the first to know. Oh, is there anything wrong with Mr. Brown, Doctor? Well, Mr. Brown ain't in the best of health. In fact, uh, three months from now, he'll be the late Mr. Brown. <laughs> the late Mr. Brown? Doctor, are you sure? I'm positive. I never misses on my diagnosis. But Andrew seems so healthy. Yeah, but don't let that fool you, miss. Good health can't help a man when he's dead. <laughs> Well, I ain't got a miss. I happen to be a specialist in the field of patients that ain't got long to live. I've got some of the shortest teeth that is in the medical profession. I never heard of that type of specialist. Oh, yeah, something new in the business. Uh, the patients, uh, well, the patients living only a few months, it gives us doctors the longest summer vacation. <laughs> oh, excuse me, doctor. I'll get it. Hello, Josephine, honey. <laughs> Oh, and the darling, your doctor's here, and he told me everything. Yes, Mr. Brown, I consider it my duty as a doctor to tell her the whole truth. Well, Josephine, now that you know that I got exactly three months to live, don't make no plans for the 28th of July. <laughs> yeah, don't make no plans for the 29th either. He might linger a day extra. I can't always think about that. Bad news. What's wrong with them anyway, Doc? Well, Miss Brown is suffering from a very rare melody. Uh, <laughs> a thing called hereditary hydrophobia. Hereditary hydrophobia? Yes, Mr. Brown inherited the hydrophobia from his father and the hereditary from his mama. You see? Yeah, mama had the worst case I ever seen. <laughs> Can be getting anything from Andy? Well, there might be. He ain't made out his will yet. I don't know what he wants to do. Yes, Josephine, I... <laughs> oh. Mr. Brown, I don't like that. That sounds like you was a little ahead of schedule there. <laughs> That's a June cough you got, and it ain't even May yet, you know. Is it really that serious, Doctor? Yeah, well, he's got back to three months. Doctor, uh, just when you figure on me going. Well, I think, Mr. Brown, that you was due to depart on Monday, July the 28th at 8 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time, of course. Yeah. Oh, Doctor, what can I do to save him? Well, there's only one thing that might help him. If he could get away from the automobile fumes of New York and inhale the fresh carbon monoxide of a place like Canada, the trip might save him. Well, if that cure is hereditary hydrophobia, I'll cooperate 100%. Doctor, you can depend on me. Thank you. I'm glad you're home, George. I've been waiting all day. Well, hello, Sapphire, darling. Uh, well, everything is all set to drive up to Canada. I'm already packed, and here's all your stuff laid out. Oh, yeah, I'll put it there. Uh... I'll get it. Hello. Oh, hello there. Oh, I'm fine. What's that? Really? Sure enough. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, sure, I understand. All right, goodbye. Uh, what's the trouble? We ain't going to that little cottage in Canada because there ain't enough room for us. Why not? The woman that invited us up has got a daughter that's in love with a fella and they're taking him up there to cure his hereditary hydrophobia. Oh, 